Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So I'm having trouble with my garage door opener motor. So I've got this older, you know, Craftsman half horsepower motor. And uh, when I tr push the button to try to open the garage door, it basically just clicks and doesn't work. So uh, what I've done is I've, uh, I've disconnected the actual door from uh, the little trolley assembly here just to kind of minimize what could potentially be going wrong. So right now it's uh, the, the motor should just be operating the chain up there and just trying to move this empty trolley. So there shouldn't be a lot of work for it to do, but let me show you how it basically doesn't work. So actually, if I climb up the ladder, let me see if I can do this one-handed, I'll just show you what's going on. And in fact, let me come up here so you can see the back of it. Actually, here, here's maybe one of the things that is going wrong. This thing is from uh, 1997. So this thing is almost 25 years old. So I guess I'm not surprised it's died. Uh, but anyway, here's what's going on. You can see it's plugged in and I've got the uh, door, the garage door opener. Let me push the button and actually let me turn off my headlamp so you can see this LED is gonna start flashing on us. And let me push a button and you can hear what's going on. So let me see in three, two, one. There you go. So you see this thing flashing? Did you hear those clicks and uh, little noises it was making? So the motor clearly didn't operate. And now I get this flashing pattern of five uh, flashes. So let me see, one, two, three, four, five, rest. And then this is just gonna repeat over and over and over. So um, I've seen on some forms that this is basically, it says like it's a sensor failure or a uh, motor overheating or a motor failure. So I've seen some people suggest of just uh, let it cool down and then to clear this error code, you can basically just unplug it. So let me just show you, like you can unplug this. So now, LED is off. This thing is, is cold. I mean, it's been sitting here for a couple of days now, so it's definitely not warm. In fact, I think we're supposed to get snow, so <laughs> um, it's definitely cool. So now I'll plug it back in. You can see it's no longer flashing. But now again, if I try this, uh, you'll hear the same series of clicks, and then we'll get the, air, the LED flash. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, push. And we're back. So uh, that's the issue. So what we're gonna do is uh, let's unplug this thing just so we don't have to we won't have to risk shocking ourselves. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is let's unscrew these four screws uh, to get this back panel off. And also what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and wrap up and label these wires. Uh, as you can see, they go to three different terminals here, just so I can remember and I don't have to, cause I'm gonna have to take these off just so that'll make a replacement easier hopefully when we fix the problem. So you can see the red one is going to this one. And then I think these are two, probably two positives cause these are just plain old white going to number two. And then these look like blacks or grounds or I don't know, something like that. Long story short, let's just label these, take off these four, or screws and uh, we'll be back in just a second. All right, so I've got the screws off. I've then labeled the wires and pulled them off of these one, two, three terminals and kind of fed them up through this hole. Um, and now that'll allow you to have a little bit more access to this uh, control uh, board. So this, let me see if I can get a better angle. You can kind of see, let me see, move this out of the way, these wires. Okay, so the, the control board is, still attached to the main motor through this kind of uh, multi-pin header right here. Uh, it's, not, it's really hard to get a good angle for this. Um, oh, there, that's a little bit better. Okay, so you can see right here. So all you gotta do is you gotta take this thing off, and let me see if I can do this one-handed without dropping everything, because that will kind of defeat the entire purpose. You can just pull this header straight up. There's straight pins. I don't think there's any actual locks or uh, anything like that on it. And again, this is really difficult to do one-handed. Um, I might have to go get an assistant to help me out with this. Or I'll tell you what, I'm gonna just pause the camera and I'm gonna pull this, this header off of the board. All right, so I got it off. As you can see, here's the, uh, this is the uh, header with all the wires. And as you can see, it just plugs into these um, basically angled uh, header pins. So basically just pull straight off and there you go. I've got the entire circuit board. So let me take this up where there's a little bit better light and then uh, we'll do a little bit further inspection on this thing. 
All right, so I've got this up here with a little bit better lighting, and I've seen suggested what some of the issues might be is after time, some of these solders uh, might crack from the PCB. So I think, in fact, uh, there, there's a couple forums online where I think where I think this connection was bad, and this thing was cracked, and the guy actually ended up having to re-solder it. I mean, on my board, that looks pretty solid. That looks like a good pad, a good bit of solder there. But if you look over here by this M over here, I noticed this, this definitely looks something happened there. You can almost see like a little bit of a, maybe it didn't do the uh, thermal shielding quite as well. Um, you can kind of see some scorch marks and look at that. That definitely does not look like a good pad right there. Uh, so I'm just, I wonder if that has something to do with it. So uh, I think what we're going to have to do is try to add some more solder and see if we can get this uh, to be a better connection. And in fact, before we do that, what might be interesting is let's go ahead and remove a few of these screws and uh, get this printed circuit board off of the piece of plastic, flip it around and inspect the other side um, of the board while we're at it. All right, so we got those screws off. So if you flip this thing over, uh, it looks like what that printed circuit board, what that component attaches to is uh, this relay right here. So it's funny, this is like a uh, you know dollar fifty part. <laughs> but as best as I can tell, uh, after inspecting the rest of the board, it seems okay. I don't see anything else wrong. So I think it is just the connection to this relay um, has that bad pad right there. So I think the plan of attack is let's just go ahead and see if we can re-solder that and see if it uh, fixes the problem. So the actual soldering job was really easy. It only took me about 30 seconds. In fact, I think it took me, you know, twice as long to get everything set up and put away. But anyway, once I had the pad soldered again, uh, I think it's time to take it downstairs and uh, plug it back into the garage door opener housing. All right, so I've got it plugged back in uh, with all the wires and kind of buttoned up. So let's give this a try and uh, see so you can go ahead and plug this in. And aha, ooh, and that's already more promising. Uh, look at that, the light came on. I probably should have mentioned, I forgot to show you earlier, uh, this light was not on earlier. So the, that was broken, now the light seems fixed. So this is promising. Let's see if I can go find, uh, where did I put the remote? Aha, okay, here's the remote. Let's give this a try um, and see if this works. All right, here we go, three, two, one. Okay, there, good. The, it, it clipped in to the, uh, to the, to the, to the, whatever that thing is, the <laughs> rail clipped into the um, actual uh, arm for the garage door. So now let's see if this is gonna work to actually lift the garage door without uh, exploding. So here we go. Three, two, one. Aha, look at that! Oh my, that is awesome. Well, I guess it's not awesome how loud this thing is, but I guess what's awesome is that um, I don't have to uh, go buy another garage door opener because this was about a five minute and, uh, you know, five cents worth of solder fix. So that seemed to work great. Uh, again, let's just double check this and here we go. Yep, that looks like it's working. And let's just come up. the tracks moving great and look at that no more errors on the LED so there you have it that was uh, way easier than I thought it was gonna be um, so uh, it looks like it's just that tiny little cracked slash bad weld which after yeah 25 years I guess I'm not surprised that it failed um, but all you got to do is just pop this thing off re-solder that uh, and you're back in business so this saved me a lot of money a lot of time and a lot of headache um, just a little quick easy DIY project so with that being said uh, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I've got other DIY fixes um, on the channel that hopefully you would find interesting. And uh, remember, the new videos come out every Monday, so I hope you'll, I'll be able to catch you at one of these future videos, and we can all learn something new together. Until then, I think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.